Hey, Creative Souls, thanks for tuning in. I'm happy that you're here. My name's Johnny. I'm a published fiction writer and a retired adjunct writing professor. For two decades, I helped college students get their words on the page. Now I teach fiction writing and screenwriting to adults in custody. I call myself a word witch. I believe I'm on this earth to heal the world through stories, whether it's the ones that I write and tell or the ones that I help you write and tell. I'm new here on YouTube and I would greatly appreciate any likes, shares, and subscribes so I can grow this channel and do more in my quest to heal the world through stories. Because as I always say, stories can heal the world, so let's do it together. Today I want to talk about the new moon in Taurus. And before I get to that, I want to mention my Alchemy of Writing membership group. At this point, this is the new moon in Taurus, so it's May 8, 2024. The founding member cost is $18 a month, and it will be going up the end of June, shortly after my birthday. And so I wanted to give you a heads up about that, that the price will be increasing, but I would love to get as many founding members in as I can at the $18 rate. It's a membership group where we meet online and write in silence. And so if that appeals to you, if you're an introvert, HSP, neurodivergent in some way, I welcome you. I welcome everyone. But this group is especially created for people who want a sense of community but don't really enjoy all of the human interaction. So that aside, let's talk now about this new moon in Taurus. As with every new moon, this is about new beginnings and it doesn't necessarily need to be brand new beginnings. It could be just a different kind of mindset about something that already pertains to your writing life. So, so I've started doing these new videos where I take astrology and pair that with a writing practice just to see how we can best utilize the movement with the planets to enhance, improve, begin, perhaps, continue with our writing practices. So let's talk about what's specific about this new moon in Taurus. As you know, I follow a number of astrologers, and for this particular video today, I heard what Christopher Witecki and Nadia Shaw both have to say about the planetary configurations and this new moon. And so let's start with what Christopher Witecki says. He says that this May, the entire month, is going to be more fertile in terms of being able to achieve our goals and manifest our desires, more fertile than any time we've seen since World War II. All right, so that's pretty significant. And it all starts with this new moon. And then as he says, it just kind of goes up from there, like a big staircase that keeps going up and up and up. One way he says to look at it is think about what it is in your life. So what it is in your writing life in particular that you want to grow out of control. So we generally think about something being out of control as a bad thing, but if we put it in a more positive context, think about what is it that you might want to grow in terms of your writing that might be viewed as out of control, just over the top success. And I can think of a few things for myself, but maybe I'm a little superstitious, so I'm not gonna say what they are right here, but I will be doing a ritual of sorts on the new moon to really concretize these intentions and and hopes and desires that I have for my own writing life. And so I encourage you to do the same. So what he means is really taking something that we want, that we deeply desire, and really like pushing it past the usual. So if you feel like you've been doing kind of the usual and just getting by and making things do, think about what you could do or what you want even to like push beyond the usual and just grow it beyond belief. And oftentimes people say when we are, you know, sort of making our intentions known that we should not say what we don't want. But in this case, Christopher says that we very much should do that. We should get very, very clear about what we do want and what we don't want. We should state that clearly and then ask for, in addition to that thing we want, so in addition to that, we should ask for that and or something better. So I have a verse that I recite when I do rituals and spells that addresses this. And so I will put it in the description and I will say it's not my own. I'm not sure where it came from. I wish I had someone to credit, but I will at least say that these words that I recite are not my own. I found them decades ago. 
and so I really, really don't know where they come from. Okay, so in addition to this kind of continually ascending staircase that he mentions that we will have the benefit of if we choose to hop on it, he says we also this month should really think about what we love and what we protect. And so in terms of your writing practice, what are those things for you? What do you love about writing? What do you love about your writing practice? And what do you protect around it? And I think this is a good time for me to reiterate and to keep reminding you that, you know, I always tell people that when we share our work, we should be very, very selective about when and to whom we share it with. Because sharing it at the wrong point in your process or with the wrong people can be really detrimental to keeping us on track. So I will say this for myself, I am still submitting my novel Miranda's Garden to agents and small presses. I've had one short story that I've been sending out and it hasn't been accepted yet, but the rejections I have gotten are those good kind of rejections that we writers love to get. It's not this one, but please send us more work. And I kind of feel like maybe, and you know, they don't tell us why it's, it's not accepted. And so I can only guess, one of my guesses is that it's kind of a dark story and it's about uh, a horrible crime, but I know there's got to be a home for this, this story. So I'm going to keep at it. And then I also have a couple of other, two, three other short stories that are near completion in various stages that I'll be working on. And then my writing through the body book, I really have a goal this year to get the revision finished and find a publisher for it. And, you know, sandwiched in there is send out my proposal to publishers, which I have ready. I just need to get the revision of the manuscript in a little bit better shape, especially with this energy. If, if someone were to say yes right now, I would not feel good about sending this current version of it that I have. So now let's talk about how Nadia Shaw views this new moon. And she talks about something else that before she gets to the new moon that's also important. So I will I will touch on that now. So Mercury has been retrograde until last week or the week before, I forget. Uh, finally went direct. And as you know, may know, Mercury is a planet of communication. So that really is important for us writers. So Mercury is finally leaving its shadow after being retrograde on the new moon, all right? So that means the energy can really kind of like skyrocket like Christopher is talking about. So this really just adds to that upward movement that Christopher mentioned when he talked about the new moon. The new moon also activates this Uranus-Jupiter conjunction that happened on April 21st. So if you think back to that weekend, it was Earth Day, think about that weekend, think about what you were doing, Think about decisions you made, things you were thinking deeply about, intentions, maybe realizations. I had a major realization that weekend about where I live. I've also known for a long time that I need to not live where I am living, but it was really driven home to me that weekend because I was out of town and felt this great sense of peace. And so for me, I know personally that in addition to focusing on my writing practice, really focusing on finding a new home is key for me. I think it's going to change a whole lot and it will also improve my writing practice. I know this. So like I said, think back to that weekend of April 21st. See if you can somehow tie that into your writing practice. See how that aligns with your writing practice and how the two fit together or don't. And maybe how you can use this new moon energy and this energy for the whole month of May to enhance and improve your writing practice. She also says that this energy gives us an opportunity to enhance our practical realities and that we can enter into a greater flow now. So that's great news for us writers as well. She says that it will be easier for life's material realities to fall into place. So how can we interpret that in terms of writing and writing practice? Well, a couple of things that come to mind for me. This might mean finding a way to balance the day job and the writing practice a little bit more fluently. It might mean finding more projects that pay for your writing. So for example, for me already, somebody recently hired me to work on character development for a video game that he's working on. And so this was a fun new side project for me that I said yes to, and I've started it and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'll just tell you the way I got that. If you are a writer and you're looking for ways to make a little extra money just in the one-off project now and then, I found this gig on Upwork. Well, actually he found me. And you may have heard of Upwork, but I'll tell you how I use it. I put a profile up there and then I just let it sit. I put it there and I walk away and I don't, 
spend a lot of time on their making proposals. I just let people come find me. And so it really cuts down on the time I need to invest in it. And then, like I said, if some new side thing pops up, it's just something a little extra that I can add to my income that's really, really helpful. So I recommend that you look into that. So Nadia also says that this new moon is about our relationship with life. So again, if we think about this in terms of our writing practice, what is your relationship like with your writing practice and your writing. As you maybe have heard me say in the past, I really believe that when we honor our impulse to write, it's the deepest form of self-love that we can show ourselves because it's our creativity wanting to be expressed and move up and out of us. And when we allow that to happen, it is a show of self-love and it also improves our health in all ways. And so think about on this new moon, what is your relationship like with your writing and your writing practice? Is it what you want it to be? And if not, what can you do to improve it? And it doesn't have to be anything vast or extreme because life is what it is. You know, I've talked recently about how I would love to be writing every day again, like I did at one point. It's just not possible for me. It's something I'm striving for, but if I can add few hours on an extra day a week, that will move me in that direction. And so that is one of my intentions. She also says that this is a time where spiritual lessons are playing under the surface. And so that's really good news for us writers. This really is the fodder for our fiction, right? The spiritual lessons from life that we make meaning of on the page with our words. And so I would say really kind of look around and think about spiritual lessons that you are seeing in yourself, maybe in others, things you're noticing. And if you're a super tuned in person, you can pick up on other people's issues and feelings and problems and when they resolve them. You can see that kind of play out. She says this new moon will also allow for some major emotional breakthroughs. So another really good thing for us writers, right? Because we can get to the emotional core of our characters so that we can render them more human and believable on the page. She also talked about acknowledging the imperfections of a well-lived life. And so I love thinking about it this way. If we isolate, if we stay to ourselves, if we don't get out and live, then we will not see as many imperfections, in quotes, right? I like to think about this as kind of embracing our dark side. And so the dark side, as you know, maybe you've heard me say before, I do not view it as a scary thing or an evil thing. It can be scary because I see our dark side as our creative subconscious in, that's one way I view it, uh, which can be scary to go there, but it's not evil the way some people like to view the darkness. Another way I think we can view darkness in humans is just mistakes that we make, bad behaviors, bad choices, and again, bad in quotation marks. But we can use these things to really step back then and explore human behavior, again, in ourselves and in others. I think striving to have a well-lived life is something I'm also working on. Uh, as a person without a car who lives in a city, I feel like my life has shrunk significantly and I've really been feeling that lately and I don't enjoy it, which is another reason I need to move. So, you know, this, this ability to hop in the car and get out and do things and go visit people and, see more of the world has really kind of left my life over the last several years. And it's something I'm wanting to change because, you know, we, we writers don't live in a vacuum. We cannot if we're going to really write well about stories about the human condition from a place of knowing, from our own deeper wisdom. So really looking deep into ourselves and finding our own darkness and then being able to transform that and put it on the page. And we don't have to write, and I'm not talking about writing memoir or personal essay and exposing ourselves. I'm talking about understanding our own humanity and finding metaphors then about the struggles that we might have to create stories on the page that can help other people feel seen and validated. And then also doing the same with others, like I was saying earlier, looking at people and seeing what makes them tick, how they behave in certain ways, and crafting stories around that behavior, not necessarily writing about them, but using them and ourselves as models. She also says there's immense love and wisdom available to us right now. So really think about how you can harness that kind of energy and really pour it into your writing. 
and see where that takes you. So I hope keeping these things in mind can maybe shift something for you if that's what you need or encourages you somehow if you've been stuck. Just keep at it, keep doing what you're doing and do your best to capitalize on this really fabulous energy that's available to us right now. And I hope that all of May is a tremendous month for you in terms of your writing and all else. And I'll be back soon for another video for sure in a couple of weeks with one on the full moon and how it can benefit your writing practice. And in between that, I'm gonna try something new and I wanna explain it deeply right now but I really love deconstructing stories and learning from them and so I'm going to start doing videos that do just that and I'm not sure which story I'll start with I'm not going to think about it too deeply I'm just going to kind of go with my gut uh, so you can be looking for that as well and then also my prompts and threes that get posted nearly every day all right, so I'll be seeing you soon. Don't forget about my Alchemy of Writing membership group. I'd love to have you in the group and write with you. As always, I send you Mad Writing Mojo. Happy writing.